My presentation is called, A Picture is Worth a Thousand Words. Now, I know the saying's been said, and I want to point out its value. If you don't take the time to take a picture of something, even if it might be minuscule at the moment, who's going to remember it for you? If you can't remember what you had for breakfast last week, Tuesday, what makes you think that you're going to remember everything that happened on the day you gave birth, the day you got married, or the day that you met your best friend? So first I want to talk about kind of the Hawaiian culture aspect of documentation. Hawaiians had a very peculiar way of storing their information and sharing it. What they did was word of mouth. They spoke their entire history. Their, all of their mo'olelo, all of their stories were spoken. If you're not sharing and speaking your stories, then you should be writing them down. If you're not writing them down, you should be at least taking a picture of it. Because when you pass along and your children are left and other people want to know your story, how are you going to share it? In this picture right here, this is the first time that I kui'd. And you can tell because I have fingernail polish on. Who wants to take a whopping bite of fingernail polish when they eat their poi? So I can honestly say that I wouldn't have remembered doing that if it weren't for the picture. And I wouldn't have been able to see how much I've improved and how much has changed since then. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was that if it weren't for the picture and if it weren't for me writing about it for a school project, I probably wouldn't have remembered that I was complaining about pounding one pound of taro. One pound. Now I can kui 20 pounds, maybe more. And to this picture, this is the first day that I actually picked out my own papakui'ai. A papakui'ai is a board in which you pound your kalawan. So this was the first day that I actually got to see her and pick her out and start working on her for the first eight hours. It took me four days to complete my papa, and it took me four days over the course of a year. So I started this January 19th, 2013, and if it weren't for the fact that my uncle told me I had to write about it, I wouldn't have remembered all of the emotions that I felt when I worked on it, all of the feelings that I had when I touched it and what made me think it was the right board for me. Um, this particular picture shows a board and a stone. That's my board after it was completed. I finished the board a day before I started doing this Holloa challenge. This Holloa challenge is a 90-day challenge in which me and two of my other classmates, Laahia and Taylor, are switching our staple starches to poi and pa'i'ai. We kui'ed ourselves, and we've been going around looking for places in which Holloa resides, Holloa being the kalo plant and the first Hawaiian man. So this cultural experience that I've taken on, I've chosen to do it with this board and this stone. This stone's name is Queenie. When you first saw the picture, it just looked like a rock on a piece of wood. And now you know that it's my wood, my papa, and it's the stone that I've chosen to have a relationship with for the next 90 days. Many firsts has, have happened this year. And by first, I mean, if you had come up to me two or three years ago and told me that I would be president of a club, if you had told me that I would enjoy working in the dirt and getting my hands dirty, I would have laughed in your face. My used to be favorite things to do is watching Netflix and lying on my bed. And now I can honestly say that if my uncle or my auntie or anyone asked me to come and do something for them in the yard, come in, participate in an activity like this, and an activity that would provide sustenance, provide food, I would do it. Because I now have learned the importance of sustainability and I've learned the importance of food resource in Hawaii. And it wasn't through like a speech and it wasn't through 
little experiences, it was kind of just through observing and seeing all of these different things around me and being able to take part in them. So in these photographs are the mala, which is a dry land taro patch down at our main gate. And this shows the planting that we did at nighttime. We tried to keep it as cultural as possible, planting with the right hand, full moon. And it was a really great experience for all of the kids that came. Another thing that made it so well done, that made it so important to me, is that this is the first time that KS students get to eat something that they've planted and get to partake in something that they've done on KS lands. This hollow a challenge has also given me the opportunity to interact with these two lovely women beside me. And we've been able to meet people that have talked to us about agriculture, talk to us about sustainability, and talk to us about these different things that are going on in Hawaii. And I think it's not just our job to learn from it. It is not just our job to sit back and take all of this information. We need to give that back. We need to give back this information. And how do you do that? How do you give back things that you've learned? You need to share them. How would you share them? You can write it down. You can take a picture. You can speak it, but what I've found to be most effective is to definitely use your photographs, use your, use your time to write the little things down. Because even if it may not seem that important now, it might be important then. For example, I had someone who wanted to make a film about me and my friends because of what we're eating. How many of you can say that you've written down what you've ate and it served a significant we recently went to Molokai, and we recently have been able to talk to a few aunties, talk to a few uncles about their land management and the different mo'olelo of this place. And what I really want to show is that I can show you a nice picture of a pretty background, but all you really see is the nice picture. You don't see the emotion that's in there. You don't know that when I stepped foot in Kalau Papa on Molokai, just by looking at this bottom corner picture, that I felt every emotion possible just by stepping on the ground, just by feeling that energy run through my body because it's just a picture. And it speaks volumes in the sense that you can see the crevice of the mountain, you can imagine what it was like to be in that place, but it's through my words that will tell you how it really felt. What I'd like to leave you with today is just the knowledge that you should always share your experiences because no one will do it exactly the way you want to. No one can take word for word. No one can take idea from idea your, your perspective. It's your perspective and you need to share that. So I'd like to leave you today with the thought that you can go by in life and just exist. You can, to and that's totally fine. But if you want to be remembered, if you want to leave something educational, if you want to leave something behind for future generations to look at, if you want to be useful in a sense, even after you're gone, you need to write things down. And you need to take the time to share your experiences with others. So. That's why I think that, you know, documenting things is very important. And I think that every one of you should consider just the little picture that you might have when you got married, the little picture that you have when you had your daughter or your son, when your baby brother was born, when you got a new dog, when you went to the, when you went to the mainland for the first time. Just think about how those little things may have changed your outlook and think about how you can share that feeling with others.